like the title suggests this is a video about why you'd want to go into tech or become a software engineer firstly i'm not going to romanticize being a software developer or a software engineer i am not going to lie it is a hard job the constant need to learn something you always need to upskill there's a feeling that you'll fall behind if you don't there's also late nights long hours if there's production bugs you'll also have to be very competitive because getting senior roles nowadays are tough because yeah it's highly competitive but if you're still game after all i've said then here are three reasons why you need to be a software engineer or why you would like to be in tech and the first one is It's a fulfilling job. With the rise of bullshit jobs nowadays, finding work that is impactful or meaningful is quite hard to find. And being a software engineer, it's a very fulfilling job. One example why this is true is because I've worked with a quality assurance company before. Basically what we do is build a system that let the laboratories and suppliers and users together to communicate in order to approve if a product is safe for its intended user because mainly what we're <coughs> trying to QA or or trying to test here are clothing mostly shoes shirts aglets what else any article of clothing and this is impactful because if our system commits a mistake a shipment a whole load of clothes could be stopped from going to other countries let's say if the factory is in Vietnam and the supplier is from a whole different place and the client is from Norway for example if our system commits a mistake that shipment of clothing will not be delivered to its intended client so it wouldn't go to norway that's one example the uh, second example is that i've been in this company where we created an app for everyday australians to budget their income so that they could develop positive financial habits it has made a positive impact especially when i knew that we're catering to 27,000 users at that at the time maybe there's more now uh, anyway there's even this video that i've watched uh, it's clean code with uncle bob on which he said that someday software developers or software engineers may have to take an oath like lawyers and doctors because software will be taking over a lot it will be in every aspect of our lives it could it will be on hospitals if not already and we can already see it happening right now with tesla we can now bet our lives that this technology could take us home or from places from a to b so it's a very impactful job you know it's very fulfilling uh, it makes you feel like you're contributing a positive impact to the world and that's one great thing about being a software engineer number two it is a job you can take anywhere with the pandemic striking the globe and work being more dynamic people have realized that hey I can do this job at home. I don't need to commute daily and cram myself into a moving piece of can every day. This is great. Anyway, my point is, the world has changed ever since the pandemic. More and more people prefer remote setups. A lot even go as far as to quit the moment the, the company, their company decides to go back to the office. I have worked remotely for six years, so 
I know that it is possible. Anyway, a lot of startups now are also doing remote work because it's practical. Can you imagine paying for an office if you know office and facilities when your business is still in its infancy? I don't think so. People now want to work remotely because it's more practical, it's cheaper that way and it lessens your CO2 emissions because you don't have to drive or ride something to get to work. <laughs> yeah, the best part is you can travel well because you can do it anywhere, right? You, you can do it remotely. So that's what I did. In 2019, I went and backpacked to five countries while working remotely. And I think that's one of the best experiences I've had with software engineering, being able to do my job while I'm at a coffee place, when I want to change my environment, I'd go to some place that has internet access and do my job there. You know, it's very refreshing. And this type of work set up provides more time for you to spend time with your family, friends, because, you know, instead of commuting or preparing early in the morning to get to work, instead of doing that, you'll have more time upskilling, spending time with your friends, creating YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, instead of you know, experiencing traffic jams in the early morning or late afternoon. So yeah, that's number two. And number three, yes, last but not the least, it's the pay all right yes i said it software developers on average in the u.s get paid 120 thousand sixty seven dollars in a year that's average you could be in the higher end of the spectrum or in the lower end but yeah 120 thousand you know count me in but unfortunately for me i'm not from the u.s so i'm I'll be lucky to even get even half of that, you know? That's high paying wage for us in the Philippines. But yeah, anywhere you go, uh, depending on what country in the Philippines, it's still high. They still get paid high, uh, software engineers. The point is software engineers are paid a lot due to the huge demand and low supply of talent pool. It's hard to have good developers come by, you know? So if you... If you are a business and you want to hire a software engineer or a developer on your team and you found out that he's good, hold on to it, you know, hold on to him. I made a critical mistake here. I assume that a software engineer is a guy or is a man. Uh, I should rephrase it. Hold on to him, her, they, them, it. Yeah, sometimes software engineers are treated like objects. Yeah. And, you know, not only that, but it's a tough job to do, like I said in the first place. Software engineering is hard to learn, it's not that easy. That's why they get paid a lot. So every day you have to come up with solution, exert that energy so that you could think of creative solutions on certain problems. Occasionally, some bugs uh, get into production and you'll have to work late and in this field, uh, if that production bug isn't fixed, then you're not going home. Or you'll have to keep working. <laughs> well, you know, uh, depending on the client, but some clients are nice and they'd let you off the hook and say, yeah, uh, it's not a critical one and you finish it when you can. But you know, if it's a production bug, as much as possible, you'll have to fix it ASAP. And when I say production bug, it's when there's an issue on the app or in the website that you build that are being used by the clients so that's what production bug means and i hope you've learned something from this video i've i hope i've taught you something yeah that's it see ya